tuned in to the Cosmic Combos Podcast, your number one source for accurate, relevant, and thought-provoking astrological conversations in the podcast nation, the place where stars and minds align. Peace. You are now tuned into the Cosmic Convos podcast. I'm your humbled host, Herut, and we got the man of the hour, the good brother, Brother Ra. How you doing? Oh, peace, King. I'm doing quite well, quite well. You know, enjoying life, taking it one day at a time. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that, man. Same thing over here. You know, so, um, you know, um, before we get rolling, you know, this episode is brought to you by Push It Forward Media Group and Cala um, Perusha Astrology. Um, you can um, go check out Push It Forward Media Group. Check out our you know newest projects at pushitforward.com. That's P-U-S-H-I-T-F-W-D.com and follow us at Push It Forward um, on Instagram. And uh, Brother Roy, how do we... Um, you know, get tuned in with Kyla Perusha. Uh, right now, we've got uh, uh, one primary way that you can get through to some uh, great information with regards to astrology. That's on Kyla Perusha Astrology on, on YouTube. Uh, you can definitely follow uh, me on there. And uh, I've got one video that's definitely getting some great, review, uh, great reviews and another one soon to come, again, on the United States of America. Um and uh, you can also uh, follow me on uh, IG at Shechem Ra or Shechem Ra at IG. And also you can follow me on Shechem Ra, follow me at Shechem Ra on Facebook. Uh, so those would be the main two ways that you definitely can get in contact with me if you're interested in more great information in this event. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. So, um, you know, before we, um, you know, get into today's episode, we got a, a couple questions, you know, from uh, people out on the various platforms on social media. Um, you ready for some questions? Let's get them. All right. So we got a brother who went deep. He, you know, he, he's a little advanced, so he wanted to know. Um, so here's his question. So Saturn is um, my yoga karaka planet. So does that mean Saturn, the Saturn Dasha, will that be beneficial for me? Hmm. Definitely a question that takes a little uh, insight on uh, Jyotish or on uh, 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 Indian astrology. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the Yoga Karaka is a phenomenal concept uh, in uh, Jyotish or uh, also known as Vedic astrology as well, in that we can actually find uh, many times a planet that is extremely supportive uh, for that particular person's uh, chart based on, of course, uh, the ascendant and what type of ascendant uh, is facilitating that particular, particularly, particular planetary uh, output. And what Yoko Karakas do is basically they are supports. They are supposed to be there to give us um, and a boost or a, uh, a uplift, a lip, uplifting energy with regards to um, uh, the things that they represent. So, for example, uh, Taurus ascendant and Libra ascendants both uh, share uh, the same yoga karaka, which is Saturn. And the qualifier for a yoga karaka is that they have to own or rule or govern, right? Um, a Kendra house, which is a house that is one of the four main aspects of life, which is the first house, the fourth house, the seventh or tenth. And they also have to co-rule or they have to um, govern a Trichona house. And a Trichona house is uh, also one, five, and nine. So for uh, Taurus Ascendant, uh, that would be the uh, ninth and tenth house. The ninth house is a Trichona house, and the tenth house is a Kendra house, uh, giving Saturn uh, that primary uh, status, which again it's supposed to uh, give that particular ascendant or that rising, or also called Lagna, a boost uh, with regards to that planetary energy. So Saturn is supposed to be able to um, add to that particular that particular person's life pattern in a way that's significant. Uh, Libra 
also shares Saturn as a yoga karaka with it ruling the fourth house, which is a Kendra, and a fifth house, which is a Trichon house. And uh, it also is supposed to be a planet that provides um, some beneficial aspects uh, to that person's life. Um, you know, astrology is a phenomenally deep science. And so uh, when the ancients would say certain things, uh, they would have to be qualified based on many things, uh, such as uh, the placement of that particular planet, uh, the strength of that planet, um, how, it's, how it's placed in other types of what we call uh, harmonic charts or Varga, char Varga charts, um, the degree of that particular planet, uh, if the planet is uh, either in exaltation or debilitation, uh, if the planet is retrograde, uh, if the planet is aspected by any type of uh, uh, enemy planet such as Rahu or Mars. Uh, so there's definitely different qualifiers for that particular um, benefit to come out of the out of that yoga karaka. So it's not always that. It, you know, it, the one thing I can say, it will probably do less harm to those ascendants, uh, such as Taurus and Libra, than it would do to other types of charts, such as uh, maybe Cancer or Leo, which those are typically planet uh, signs that don't do well with that type of planetary energy. Saturn uh, kind of beats up on those folks, if you will, and teaches us some deep lessons about life. Um, so we'd have to definitely take a look to see uh, what are the supporting mechanisms with regards to the, that placement, uh, how it's situated, and um, also see the timing of it in a person's life as well. You know, if you get, um, let's say, that Saturn period, which uh, it's being a, it should being a yoga karaka, let's say it's uh, in early childhood, right? Uh, you're not going to get the same qualities or the same opportunities that you would, let's say, if you're in your adult years or, let's say, even in your elder years. Uh, maybe you're too old to um, really reap the rewards of a planetary um, period that deals with yoga karaka, yoga karaka. So all of these things have to be taken into consideration when we really try to gauge and judge how that planet is going to do for us in its particular planetary cycle, we call a dasha, what I like to call uh, a life chapter, if you will. So, you know, it doesn't make sense that just because it has that qualification doesn't mean it's going to give the output that it should give, but it also may not harm or challenge that person as it would, let's say, another particular type of ascendant or sign. Yeah, indeed. I, I mean, I can um, I can personally attest to this um, because, um, you know, my yoga um, karaka is uh, Mars and um, I ran a Mars dasha from 2003 to 2010. And that was like a very, uh, very challenging period of life. It was, you know, it wasn't, you know, I wouldn't when I reflect on it, I wouldn't say that it was a negative period of time, but a lot of, you know, testing type situations, you know, came to my person, you know, um, I lost my, my mother during that Dasha, um, my, uh, closest grandparents and, uh, my close cousin, you know, my, my, my cousin, we're like a few weeks apart, um, in birth. So I, you know, and then like, I, I think I, I mean, I, financially, you know, I had some hard, hardcore challenges financially. This was all through my early twenties, you know, to my base. Yeah. Pretty much my twenties. This is when I ran that Dasha. So, um, well, late teens, early twenties, um, is when I ran that Dasha. So, um, you know, it was try. it was, a, I learned a lot, you know, it helped build me, but it definitely, I went, <laughs> you know, when like, uh, we was, you know, living it up during that time period without, you know, definitely without no stretch of imagination, it wasn't nothing like that. Mm, yeah. You know, King, that's an excellent example of how those particular planetary periods and just to elucidate a little further, uh, Mars, uh, is a yoga karaka for cancer ascendants ruling the fifth house and also the tenth house. The fifth house is a Tracone house and the tenth house is a Kendra house. So, uh, and also for Leo as well, uh, it rules the fourth house, which is a Kendra house and the ninth house, which is a Tracone house. So both of those houses are definitely, both of those, excuse me, both of those charts are definitely supposedly 
And I would say definitely because there is some other imports when it regards to uh, a yoga karaka and its life chapter or dasha period and that it could have um, definitely done more damage or harmed you personally um, had it been or had you been maybe another type of ascendant, let's say even a Gemini uh, uh, ascendant, which uh, can definitely do damage uh, for them many in many ways. Um, but... <clears throat> Um, you know, if I'm correct, the Tef, uh, your yep. Mars is in your fourth house, correct? Right. So that puts it in Libra. And so just knowing a few things about, um, that particular, uh, arrangement, uh, Mars being in your fourth house, i.e. of mother, right. Uh, shows the, um, uh, challenge with regards to losing, uh, you know, one of the closest people in our lives, you know, the one woman that gave us birth, uh, your mother, right? Um, it also, uh, it's also, being that it rules the 10th house, it's kind of like in the sign that is, is that's its antithesis, right? Uh, Libra, uh, which is ruled by Venus, uh, doesn't do particularly well with Martian uh, energies, if you will. So the planet is somewhat weakened in a sign that's yeah. opposite to its natural ruler, um, and so, uh, with that being said, not only that, we have to look at the degree, right? Uh, we have to look at other uh, planets that are with that particular uh, planet. So, any type of conjunctions, uh, any type of yogas, right? Um, those will also have a great impact on that particular planetary period if the planet is being aspected by something that is not supportive or conducive to that particular planet's inner energetic output. So, you know, Mars being in the fourth house can definitely bring issues to the home, right? Issues to the family, right? Issues to the mother, mm -hmm. issues to education, right? Um, those are areas that you might find when that particular planet, and let me also say this as well, you know, let me put this out there so that people can understand how these things work. You know, Saturn is still Saturn, right? Um, it's not going to change its overall nature, right? Because it's now your best friend, right? Or your best planet. Um, and Mars as well, yeah. right? Mars is Mars, right? These are both malefic, what we call malefic planets. And malefic is not bad, right? You know, we need malefics in our life to really give us strength and the uh, endurance and the, the drive to overcome some of the things that can yeah. uh, be challenging in life. So, you know, it's not negative in the sense that uh, malefic is bad or uh, ill or, you know, things like that. But it's just there to challenge us and to wake us up out of our slumber, if you will. And if I'm correct, I believe your Mercury is conjunct Mars. Yeah, Mercury, yes. Right? Is that correct? Yep. Right. So Mercury rules the 12th house, right, of loss, right? Not only that. Mercury rules the third house, and the third, if you count from the twelfth, I'm excuse me, if you count from the fourth, going around to the third, the third house becomes the twelfth to the fourth, meaning loss of anything that deals with the fourth house, so loss of mother, right? So that alone, right, can change the overall uh, feel, the overall. Um, manifestations and the overall output of even a planet that is supposed to be extremely beneficial for us with regards to our life chapters or what we call, um, or what are called dashas in um, Jyotish, which is the proper term. Some people say Vedic astrology. I would also say Indian astrology. So, um, you know, that is just to show bar none and even say sun. If I throw that in the mix, that's a whole nother aspect of it because the sun uh, in Libra uh, doesn't do so well. And the sun in the fourth house loses a lot of strength, which we call, which uh, is regarding Dikbala. And so does Mars. Mars loses a lot of strength, with which card, which, which deals with Dikbala directional strength. Right? So these, all of those things adding in when that planet runs, it's, it's period, right? Uh, which is about seven years, uh, it's not going to be one that we would feel is very beneficial to us in the sense of um, 
the immediate sense, right? But it can also remember malefics can also free us, right, from things that may be holding us back from moving forward, things that might not be perceived as being beneficial, yeah. but might wake us up, right, to something that needs to be done. Might be the energy that is needed to say, uh, your mother is now in the ancestral plane pushing from behind, right, and uh, urging you to come on from ahead to get certain things done with regards to uh, your destiny. So, again, you know, it's not all bad when we say uh, malefics, and it's not all good when we say yoga karakas. Absolutely, that absolutely, sense. man. That was a, uh, a great, great, great breakdown, you know, of that whole system. You know, because a lot of, I mean, you know, we, especially, I mean, it's good, you know, a lot of information is getting out there right now, you know, but sometimes, you know, certain, you know, astrologists, different things like that, they might throw things out there and give people an impression, you know. That, you know, certain things is all good and all, you know, all bad or whatever, but, you know, just kind of mix missing the the context, you know, and, and like you said, the uh, qualification, you know, um, of those, you know, particular um, definitely, brother, you know, definitely. situations you know, in the chart. This is, um, it is a science and it's an art as well. And um, we have to, you know, everything in this science is qualified by something else and that's qualified by something else and so forth and so forth and so forth. And so what it really is, is we begin to have to, to begin to look at it from a overall perspective at first and then drop drill in to those very specific aspects of what we're looking at with regards to either planetary placements, rulerships, aspects, um, degrees and so forth. All these things matter when we're dealing with the science. And so uh, the art comes in when you blend, right, those things, when you add in or subtract certain factors that uh, can create a different canvas um, as far as our life is concerned. So I just option anybody, you know, uh, if you're interested, you know, definitely um, get in contact with me. I'm teaching classes with regards to the science. Uh, all of my students are definitely um quite fulfilled with regards to the progress that they're getting with regards to the information that they're getting uh, to look at these things. And so you want to have someone that, you know, has been in it. I've been in it for, you know, almost 20 plus years. Um, uh, we both have a, a spiritual guide that knows us both very well. And she can even attest to the fact that uh, this is something that I've taken and uh, elevated to another level in regards to uh, my studies and practice. So, um, you know, study, you know, get your hands on as much information as possible. Um, ask questions. If you all have any questions, definitely drop them in. We'd love to answer them. Uh, you know, we can even have a show where, you know, maybe at some point in the future we have some people come on and ask questions uh, uh, down the line. So, you know, take it on. It's a beautiful science. It, it's something I've never seen in, in the West with regards to its approach, uh, its power, and his majesty with, I mean, I can tell you, Tef, uh, I never, and I can say this without a grain of salt, I have never had someone, and this is provided I have all the information, mind you, my father, I have the date, the time, the correct time, right, which is key, right, and uh, the place. When all that comes into play and everything's lined up perfectly, this science is infallible. Uh, you will not ever, and I say ever with emphasis, ever have someone tell you that you're wrong, right? And I'm not talking about predictive science. That's a whole other apparatus, right? I'm talking about just the qualifications of looking at a natal chart and getting certain things out of it just to give the person a synopsis of who they are, what their history looks like in the past, and even possibly you know, what it might look like in the future in the general sense. When we start talking about predictive sciences and the application of that, uh, it takes a while to really hone in, and you have to have very specific times. That is, again, the most key important in any astrological system, in Bazi, in uh, Jyotish, in Western astrology, um, in Mahabot, which is Burmese astrology, um, you know, they have different forms of astrology out here, uh, Mayan astrology. Uh, all of them require uh, information that gives us very, very key details about time. And that's all it is. We're only studying time, how things happen uh, in large uh, and smaller cycles. So, you know, again, 
uh, people out there get into it, study it. There's so much information out there on YouTube, so much information out there on the internet. There's great books, great authors. Um, you know, and again, uh, myself as well, which I'm teaching uh, a fun astrology fundamentals course right now. It's eight weeks. And, uh, again, you know, it, it is a science that you will never regret learning, even in the basic sense of the word. I don't know if you would agree with that, Atef, if you've seen its power in your, um, uh, personal life, but, um, I know that our conversations have definitely warranted your ability to see some things that you wouldn't see otherwise. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Astrology is it's the most left on science, I think, in in in, in this era right now. You know, okay. all right, all right. So, um, we've got a couple more questions. We can go through these real, real, real quick. Um, so we got a brother on Instagram. So this is a question for you. He said, um, you know, brother, why brother Ra was about to mention a book on Freemason masonry and astrology what is the name of the book that he was going to mention oh yeah i remember that uh that comment i do apologize uh people i you know you get in these conversations they get deep quickly uh and you know i apologize if i left that information out let me go ahead and throw it out there for the people uh it's a wonderful book on freemason astrology or masonic astrology it's called turning the solomon key uh it's by robert Luma, uh, lomas and uh, excellent book on um, different scientists that they, I mean, I'm talking about scientists uh, that they deal with in regards to um, skeptic, skeptics, right? Individuals that uh, kind of don't buy uh, the science of astrology, if you will. And uh, those skeptics he were even proven wrong. Uh, a skeptic by the name of Michael Gonklin. Uh, he's one of the individuals mentioned in the book uh, several times, and uh, he's done studies um, that show certain planetary placements in the heavens do yield certain types of individuals, bar none. And this is statistically proven over and over and over again. Uh, we can even talk about a show at some point in the future, uh, the skepticism of the science of astrology and show uh, how it does work and uh, why it's gotten a bad rap, if you will. But uh, uh, one other thing I want to mention in regards to those books uh, is in another book called uh, Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. And in that book specifically, and this book was written in 1872, right? Uh, shortly after uh, slavery was so-called abolished, right? Um, Albert Pike, uh, some say he was the fo founder of... of um, the Ku Klux Klan, right? Uh, I haven't corroborated that with regards to any emphatic data, but uh, that is something that is purported. But in that book, he himself uh, advises to use sidereal astrology with regards to looking at the heavens, and so does uh, certain parts of the book I mentioned, Turning the Solomon's, Turning Solomon's Key. So uh, those are definitely two books that, that any... Um, a uh, person that's serious about studying this type of science would want to have on their book show. So again, I apologize for missing that point in last week's uh, show. Boom. That's excellent. So um, got one more question and this question is going to segue us into our, um, our topic for the day. Um, another comment from um, Instagram is um, they suggested that uh, maybe in a future episode, we could do a show on an African country and explain the past, its present, and possibly some future predictions regarding that country. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. uh, that's an excellent, excellent question and excellent topic for us to delve into at some point. Um, there's plenty of African countries we could touch upon uh, to uh, explore the signs in regards to uh, the portents and the omens that come down from the heavens and show us what's going on on the ground. Uh, one of them I would throw out there and uh, we'll just kind of, we'll see if this works for us a little later. Maybe Liberia would be an excellent one because of the nature of uh, the country and how it was founded and, and uh, even who it was founded for. So that may be one that we would uh, definitely want to tackle at some point here in the future. Uh, if you're down King. Oh, I like it. I'm definitely down, definitely down for that. Indeed. You know? Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's it for the questions. Um, but you know, today, you know, that last uh, 
you know, comment kind of segues us into our topic for the day. We're going to, you know, kind of um, get into the, the area of astrology called mundane astrology, um, you know, where we deal with the, um, you know, the, the astrological um, significance or, you know, uh, indicators of a country um, or city or any any non actual, you know, person, <laughs> you know, for lack mm-hmm. of a better term. Mm-hmm. And um, so what, what, you know, what, what, what cities are you going to go over today, um, Brother Ra? Uh, we are going to deal with um, two cities that have definitely, um, it's easy to spot uh, with regards to um, the drama, if you will, surrounding that city, uh, the, the things that are shown uh, with regards to uh, the ability to see the city and its astrological imports. Um, and, you know, before we get into those cities uh, and really touch upon them, you know, there's a few things I want to touch on with regards to uh, this form of astrology. Now, the form of astrology that most people are familiar with uh, is natal astrology and that is just basically where we take your birth time my birth time anyone's birth time date place and we create the chart and we start to explore certain psychological underpinnings with regards to that person's personality uh, characteristics and procliv- proclivities uh, that's that's one aspect of it um there's another aspect and there's a few Right. We'll get on to the ones that uh, we can get into. There's also even what we call the Mahorta or what they say, electional astrology in the West, where we create a specific time to do something where we're trying to maximize the forces in the heavens to gain some uh, momentum on the ground and trying to create either a business or buy a home or have a child or things of that nature. And there's many, many, many things we can use in regards to that astrology. Uh, But this typical form of astrology is called mundane astrology. And mundane astrology is something that the ancients used um, to forecast, uh, to give an understanding of how and what and when things would happen in regards to a nation, right? In regards to a people, in regards to in a specific locale or area where there's a commonality and a common theme. And uh, over time, uh, and I think I even mentioned it in the last show, uh, that uh, uh, this is a science that is used um, in secret these days, right? Uh, Astrology is again been given kind of a bad rap as being a pseudo quote unquote science, and it's far from that. But um, the ancients used it, and they still use it to this day. Uh, in fact, we talked about it uh, in regards to the elections, right? Uh, how uh, America contrived and created the electional election process uh, with regards to certain times when they knew that it would be beneficial to the powers that be to have the people so-called cast their vote, right? And that's a form of understanding of how mundane astrology works. But we also can apply that same science in looking at cities. We can apply it in regards to looking at countries, uh, businesses, uh, institutions, large institutions. I'm talking about, you know, institutions that have been around for periods of time over, you know, 120 plus years, um, you know, such as uh, educational institutions, um, charitable institutions, uh, and so forth. I mean, there's a great number of, of um, ways we can apply this type of science. But, uh, you know, being that it is so potent and powerful uh, in regards to being able to forecast, and not not only forecast, but even get an understanding on the past and what's happened, uh, the science is just, it's it's phenomenal. You can't even imagine, and we're going to have some definite fun here talking about uh, these next couple of cities and and really see, you know, that uh, it is true, in fact, that uh, astrology being applied at this level is 
100% accurate. So um, the thing I kind of want to just mention in regards to this astrology is that, you know, what we do is we kind of take the general meanings of the houses and expand them, right? Or the houses, the planets, the signs, you know, and so aspects and everything that we do for the natal chart, we just expand it and kind of uh, grow it to see um, the larger framework, like I said, uh, of a large institution or a large or a country. And uh, one of the things we can just say, like, for example, in mundane astrology, uh, the first house, like we would say, is the body, right, for uh, a natal chart. It also, in the um, mundane, mundane chart, just rules the general conditions of a nation. It just rules the overall theme of the country, right? Um, it rules the overall pulse of uh, how it is how that particular nation, city, or country is perceived by the world at large. Um, the second house, just like in natal astrology, rules uh, uh, values, right? Well, the second house rules values of a nation, right? Um, the bankroll of a nation, right? Um, the overall beginnings, the general beginnings of a nation. Uh, the third house is going to rule just like uh, arms and uh, hands and uh, communications. Well, it would do the same thing for uh, a nation. It's going to rule communications. It's going to rule transportation. It's going to rule um, uh, the ideology. Not want to say the ideology, but the ideas, the way the country is going to express themselves, right? Uh, the fourth house Again, uh, education, just like education in the uh, natal sense, uh, in the sense of a country, a city or a state, uh, it's going to rule education for that particular large apparatus as well. Uh, the fifth house dealing with children, uh, dealing with um, um, dealing with the creative side of things, right? Same thing for a nation, right? It's going to rule uh, the the intellects of the nation, right? The thinking body of the nation, um, uh, higher education in a sense of not in the in the base education like the fourth house, but more or less um, individuals that have master's degrees and um, uh, I don't want to say doctorates, but those that really do uh, shape the country with regards to their their. Um, their mental apparatus. Uh, sixth house, just like it rules for uh, a natal chart, rules illness for the country itself. It rules the defense system. It rules the military uh, complex for a nation. Uh, it rules its ability to defend itself in general. Uh, it rules uh, imbalances, right? It rules uh, uh, complaints, right? It rules the working class, if you will. Uh, the seventh house is uh, just like in a in a natal chart. It rules um, marriage for, per se, and marriage meaning our ability to keep a promise, right? To, to honor a contract, right? Um, to uphold uh, the other party, if you will. Well, in a nation, it rules business, right? Foreign affairs, right? Um, the ability to um, to um, deal with opposition, if you will. Because um, the seventh house is also the house that is opposite to ourself as well. Um, <clears throat> and the eighth house uh, in a chart is one that deals with transformation, sun, uh, unexpected upheavals, um, uh, things that are very deep and hidden, obscure, right? Well, in a nation, it rules the similar things with regards to corruption, uh, with regards to um, um, tumultuous events, right? Uh, even other people's money, uh, if the nation borrows a great deal, right? Whether or not it pays it back. Uh, and, and we can go on and on, right? I mean, we go all, around, all the way around. So, you know, it's just the same thing, but expanded, right to encompass a large uh, number of people a large uh, body of people and with that being said uh, we definitely can you know dive on into uh, a chart here um, one of the most uh, famous and well-known cities um, <clears throat> and that's Los Angeles California and <clears throat> Los Angeles California uh, it, it, it's it, it, the chart itself really shows 
what it stands for, bar none. Um, it's a Libra ascendant, right? And many of us, many people may not know kind of what that means. But Libra is ruled by Venus, right? And Venus is the planet of, in fact, Venus itself is the third brightest body in the sky, uh, second at night, right? Third in comparison to the sun and the moon. Right, second in comparison to the moon at night. So it's a very, very bright, bright object. And that brightness calls forth the shine, if you will, right? And that shine is just like, you know, Los Angeles is a, a city that is, it shines, right? It has a lot of um, impact, not only with regards to the United States of America, but the world at large, right? Uh, and so being ruled by Venus, being Libra, um, it definitely shows uh, the city of, of, of many things, right? Uh, we also know that Libra is the sign that deals with the opposite sex, if you will, right? It deals with marriage, so-called, right? And um, we're definitely going to get into that with regards to what those imports are around uh, that city. Yeah. But just to understand what that Libra ascendant brings is that rulership uh, that Venus has of the sign definitely shows the light that it throws on, again, not only the country, but the world. So, um, before, before we uh, go forward, um, anymore, could you, uh, share the, the birth, um, not the birth, but the, you know, the, the time, the date and time that we're using for, um, Los Angeles. And maybe if you could give a little, just a little tidbit on where that comes from. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, you know, what I try to do is uh, look at different um, and what you can do is one of the things is to begin to research, right? Um, what not only a country, not only a state uh, business or so forth institution, but just look at the overall imports of when the city is birthed, right? And I say birth, meaning that, you know, when things kind of congealed. And it is not an easy thing to pinpoint. Uh, there's quite a few uh, ways to get the information, um, uh, one, of which, one of which is, you know, just researching. Um, you can do it on the Internet. You can go to archives, right, and see uh, when the city was founded. Um, and there's, let, let, let's say this as well, there's different beginnings, right, for a nation, a city, or a state. It's not just a one-stop shop, right? There are different times when a state or a nation or a city may come into birth from an older form of itself, right? So that's important to realize because when you do the history on Los Angeles, uh, there's a vast history on that city. I mean, originally it belonged to Native Americans and yeah. uh, was part of um, um, uh, what we know as Mexico, right? It was originally a part of that uh, originally. So uh, bar none, we can't really like say, well, this is when the first people got there, right? That's very hard to do. Yeah. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, we can uh, kind of delineate when the city itself took birth as as far as what we know it as now, right? Um, and, you know, I mean, you could look at you know New York City. I mean, New York City is an old city. It's not something. It's one of the first cities in America. You know, um, Washington D.C., old city, right? So, you know, and the older, sometimes it's harder it is to kind of pinpoint that, that particular jump off, if you will. But uh, I use a system um, that gives me a phenomenal database of different options to use. And uh, what I do is I do what I use a system, uh, what is called um, um, rectification. Right. And rectification is when we take a date and a time and kind of play with it and kind of use different dates and different times to kind of see which is the best time and really what does fit based on certain events um, like the Los Angeles riots, earthquakes, um, disasters, things like that. We kind of use that to kind of gauge or understand what is the specifics of that particular start time. And so um, just to kind of give you uh, the data for this particular city, uh, Los Angeles, California was birthed on September 4th, 1781, right? So it's fairly old as well. Yeah. And 
the time that I can say is fairly accurate and other people might have other times and you can test it. The best way to use this is to test it. See if the, if the information that has been presented actually matches what is in the heavens and as above, so below. If it doesn't match, you have to go back and start to really tweak, add, subtract, multiply, divide, and so forth. Really the factors that are the underlying beginnings and also the current factors of the city so you can see, really see hey you know what this this doesn't fit or this fits and we can do this even for natal charts sometimes people don't even have their birth times and it is a tedious process king it's a long arduous process to get that specific time but again it can be done and and has been done uh, for this particular these particular cities so again uh, los angeles california the date is september 4th 1781 and the time is 9 18 a.m now, in this astrology as well, this form of astrology, and normally in natal astrology, we don't really touch on the outer planets too much because the cycles of time are too vast, right? I think we talked about that one time, a conversation between my, yourself and myself. Those cycles of time are just too vast for man to really reap the benefits, right, of being able to use those in a natal chart. Yeah. But in charts that... Uh, that are beyond uh, when we deal with things that are beyond or things objects such as uh, city states or plate or um, city states or countries or institutions objects that are beyond the 120 year cycle that's been so called a lot of to man and so you know the country right has the benefit to reap the rewards of a Uranus cycle. And, you know, Uranus is a funny one. I can use Uranus to some degree in a natal chart because the cycle itself happens, you know, it takes 84 years to make one grand cycle. So it takes about seven years to transit one sign. So, you know, some of us do get to live at a, you know, to uh, 84 years, right? Yeah. And, you know, we get one cycle, right? But who masters things the first time around, right? So, <laughs> you know, it's is definitely one that uh, it can be used with some 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 expertise. If you're using it, you would definitely want to tighten it in a natal chart. You definitely want to tighten it up, you know, to within three degrees, two degrees, one degree of a planet or a cusp, right? So you want to have it right on that degree. I mean, literally, I would prefer one to two degrees really to be safe, but sometimes three degrees will work as well. And the further degrees, the less the impact. And when you get up to three and four and five, well, five, four and five degrees, the person's not going to literally necessarily feel it. They're not going to be able to perceive it. It's going to be very hard to see. And that's only Uranus. Neptune, if you maybe even have it like conjunct at zero degree, there's maybe no degree difference. Uh, it's right on that same degree. You might get some imports with new Neptune and Pluto, of course. Uh, they've even declassified Neptune as a so-called planet, so if you will. I mean, um, but, you know, it, Neptune takes 248 years. Uh, I'm sorry, Neptune takes 164 years. Pluto takes one, 248 years to make one complete circuit. So, again, you know, in natal astrology, you have to use it with a very keen eye if you're going to use it at all. Uh, we have Rahu and Ketu uh, to kind of provide those um, strange factors, if you will, in a natal chart. But in a mundane chart, we definitely can use those outer planets. And so they give us a very deep understanding of the things that go on within a large uh, group of people, wherever they may congeal. Yeah. So moving in, right, to Los Angeles, again, we said that it's a Libra ascendant, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Libra, again, is ruled by Venus. So we can all see the city, city of stars, right? The city of, uh, uh, of Hollywood. You know, and Hollywood is its own city, believe it or not, Hatef. Uh, it is its own city. It has its own chart and everything. But the city of Los Angeles is there as the undergirding. And let me say this as well. When you look at a chart like this, you want to take into context the nation as well, as well the state that it's in, and also you know just the geographic location, all those things you want to add into the equation to really get an understanding. But the city of Hollywood is founded on the back of Los Angeles, right? So we can kind of 
speak about them in some synonymous way. Yeah. And so um, Los Angeles is known as the city of film, right? It's the city where everyone moves to when they want to become a what? A star. Right. Hey, right. And Venus is called the bright and morning star. Yeah. Star. Right. So then right there, right there, right there, right. We can see, right. The theme is tight, right? We can tighten we can tighten that up pretty good, right? And Taurus is also ruled by Venus, right? But Taurus is an earthly ruled sign. It's an earth sign. It doesn't give the same imports that Libra does with uh, the talents, the arts, right? In fact, Libra and the liberal arts, right? They almost sound the same, right? Yeah. They have kind of the same, right? Same similar uh, undertone with regards to the way the, the word has been structured, structured, structured. So, getting deeper, right, into this particular uh, science with regards to Los Angeles, uh, one of the things is that um, we all know, right, that Los Angeles is known for its traffic, right? Um, we all hear about, and I've even seen and witnessed myself firsthand, <laughs> yeah. that traffic is something else, man. You could go uh, maybe 10 miles, man. And if you're not in that inner area, right in that locale, if you're trying to get on that highway, man, it is a beast, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not something you want to do, right? And people that commute, they commute. I mean, they expect to be in traffic at least an hour, hour and a half. If I said at least, right? It could be two hours, man. It could be two and a half hours, depending on, you know, where you're, to, where you're going uh, from and where, you, where you're coming from and where you're going to. Yeah. So, you know, um, the chart itself holds some definite powerful answers with regards to that particular um, situation and so remember we said that in a in a chart in a city or even in a nation you know or a state uh, you want to look to the third house to see the transportation system right because again it's how we get around it's how we move it's how we do short distance travels within the context of that thing itself yes and so uh, the third house houses mars right and Mars is a malefic planet. And again, malefic doesn't mean bad, right? It just means that it's energies that are definitely going to cause you to pay attention, if you will, right? You can't sleep on these types of energies, right? It's yeah. going to cause you to right, deal with things that are coming your way. And so, you know, one of the things, if I'm correct, uh, there's a lot of um, uh, murders and um um, uh, fights and things of that nature that happen in context of the transit system. I mean, even on those city streets, you could even say, you know, if you want to say like the city streets, that's the third house, right? Yeah. Those city streets are definitely to be dealt with, right? Um, there's an aggression that is in the city itself. When you get there, you know, it seems very nice and palm trees and, you know, the, the so-called stars and all that. But when you get down to the grassroots level, you know, folks are, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not like New Yorkers now. Let me say that. And I'm not saying all New Yorkers are rough, right? I've been to New York too. And <laughs> uh, it's a different element from coast to coast, right? But but on each coast, there's a respective edge, if you will, right? Yeah. Uh, Mars brings that edginess, if you will. And when you're in traffic, man, you feel it, right? You feel it all around you. You don't want to get out your car, right? You definitely <laughs> don't want to talk stuff, man, because those people, they got something in their truck for you, maybe even in their lap for you, right? Yeah. Where, you know, they're ready because they just getting, I mean, think about it, you're getting off work. You travel an hour, hour and a half in the morning right and now you're getting off work you're tired you're exhausted the edginess is all around you and some guy just flips you off man and you are not you know uh, in that space of mind to, to to breathe right you're in the space of mind to release if you will and uh, that's where you know you can see a lot of the the the, the angst and the frustration and the anger and the um the forcefulness when it comes to driving in that city, you know. Um, so, you know, Mars being in that particular placement definitely shows, again, right, match for match, 
right? One for one, right? And you could do this all day with the chart. I mean, we don't do everything, but we're definitely going to touch on significant points, some significant points to just highlight uh, what this particular mundane astrology can do and really to show you Los Angeles uh, as far as uh, their chart is concerned. So uh, the other thing is that what we look at in astrology, and this is again in natal and mundane, uh, what we do is that we look at what's called a dispositor or a ruler or a lord of a particular house. And what we do is we take the sign that is over or kind of um, you know, laid over that particular uh, uh, house. So Libra being the ascendant, uh, Libra being the first sign in the, uh, the first house, not the first sign, but the first house. And we just count one, Libra, two, Scorpio, which is the second house, and then three, Sagittarius, which is the third house, right? And so that third house is ruled by Jupiter. The Lord is Jupiter, or the dispositor is Jupiter. Well, we want to use that to see kind of what are some further, you know, things that we can understand about that traffic, about that particular apparatus with, you know, in a city or in, you know, in a large body of people. And so Jupiter ruling that particular um, house, uh, it's with, when we say with, we could also say conjunct, right? Uh, it's with Saturn. And Saturn is another malefic that literally restricts, constricts, delays, right? Um, treats obstructions, right? In regards to anything that is dealing with, whether it be the house that it's in or the planet that it that is with or the house that that planet rules. And so yeah. now we have two factors. Not only do we have Mars in the third house, which deals with the edginess, the fiery nature of those streets, right? The heated element with regards to driving, but also the constriction and the delay aspect of that particular house as well, or that area of that city as well. Right. So, I mean, that's a powerful import, man. That's another one for one. Right. So now we're two for two. Right. With regards to yeah. that particular uh, city. I mean, I know you, you got to be seeing this right, King. I mean, this should be definitely becoming pretty clear for you, uh, being that you're uh, a student as well, a student of astrology as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So to move further into some things, um, you know, one of the things that uh, Los Angeles is known for, and this is, again, along the lines, more or less, of the film industry, right? But uh, there's a dark side to it as well, right? And, you know, I'm not here to knock anybody and what they do. If that's your thing, that's your thing, right? Um, <laughs> but these are things that we definitely can take notice of because these are things that are, these are, this is not something that I'm making up. Uh, you're not making it up. Um, people don't make it up. It's in your face. It's there to be witnessed, recognized, and even to be um, analyzed to some degree. Yeah. Um, Los Angeles is known for film, right? Mm -hmm. But the dark side of film, you know, you know, we would say it could be along the lines of pornography, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of times the casting couch <laughs> right ends up the places most folks don't want to be <laughs> at some point down the road right <laughs> the yeah. casting couch because it becomes another type of couch and, and then you can you know imagination can go from there but a lot, um, lot, it, it, a lot of people getting in trouble because of that casting couch right now <laughs> definitely man definitely that casting couch is a doozy right but um uh, bar none, right? I mean, Los Angeles is the capital for pornography of the world, right? Uh, and I say capital, I mean a billion dollar business, right? That affects the whole world. And, and I, I might be speaking very lightly, if you will, in regards to those numbers, billion. I mean, I would say probably more than a billion dollar business, right? Multi billion dollar business. Um, but um, the chart itself will reveal those aspects, right? Uh, unsavory or, or not, as it is. Um, the Ascendant Lord, and again, we, we're talking about 
a planet that is being that is ruling a particular house and again in a particular aspect of that particular country nation or place and the first house as we said is the general kind of common people the image as well you know what is the per- perception of it if you will right um is the first house also and uh venus being the ruler right is in the 12th house right now the 12th house deals with things that are hidden right things that are under uh in the closet as they say right um things that are behind the scenes literally right things that are not readily seen in public in the naked eye with the with the naked eye right you, you don't see these things uh in, you know in the park or in the newspaper or you know um, they're not published uh in the mainstream sense of things uh, the 12th house is a house that again is some place that uh it, in fact, I mean, literally, when we deal with it, as far as the natal chart is concerned, it deals with bed pleasures, right? And so we can expand that and apply those bed pleasures to a city, right, that deals in, right, filming those pleasures, right? The ruler of that particular city is in that particular house it's in the 12th house and to add insult to injury right and not all times is debilitation bad and not all times is exaltation good and these are astrological terms that we gauge the strength and the quality of a planet right but venus being in virgo right it doesn't do the best that it would, let's say, if it was in, let's say, Libra or Taurus or even Pisces, right? It just doesn't do the same. It doesn't have the same level of strength. It reduces that strength to almost nothing, right? There are other qualifiers that can give it some lightening it up. We call, it's called Nietzsche Bang Raja Yoga, which is a cancellation of debilitation. It really doesn't cancel it, right? You still have those negative imports and aspects to it, but um, sometimes a negative can become a positive, if you will. The negative can switch certain things on and cause an causing cause the opposite effect to happen even though the, the negative has to happen first in order for the positive to come but that's a whole nother topic a whole nother show but it being debilitated in the 12th house another way we can show right that yes there is another now we're three for three right now we're showing the pornography industry uh, with regards to being the underbelly or the underside of the film industry what the city is known for right um and uh venus again is movie stars right it yeah. is the planet of stars movie stars right uh, the film industry on the light side right um and so it's in a house that and the 12th house is also the house of loss right it's the house of escapism right as well so I mean, this is another. This is three for three. I mean, I when I saw this, I'm like, it's lined up so perfectly, man. You couldn't even argue it if you wanted to, right? I couldn't argue it if I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, there's just, you know, it's a consistent way we can see, you know, one thing after another thing after another thing after another thing that shows that this is definitely the chart that is affiliated or akin to Los Angeles, California. Now, remember I mentioned, I said that we also use the outer planets, right? In this scheme of things, right? And so, I mean, the country is fairly old, right? 1781, it's at over 100 and some odd years, almost really 200 years, right? Let's see, 1781, 1881, 1981. So it's over 200 years old, right? So, We've got a couple of, we've almost got a whole Pluto cycle in there at 248 years. America, in fact, is just a little bit older at 1776. So America will be getting its first Pluto return here very shortly. Mm. First Pluto return, if you will. Right. Um, So trying to to get that Pluto return tough. Uh, we're trying to make it man. we're trying to see if we can make it it's going to be interesting to see what happens right yeah. and it takes 21 years for Pluto to move through one sign so this is not something that's just going you know 
be a, a bleep on the radar screen, right? This is something that's going to be uh, slowly accumulated and built up to uh, crescendo, if you will. And uh, yeah. it is going to be interesting to see uh, in the next 40 years of how this country is going to go. As you can see right now, as we discussed in the elections, it's up for grabs, right? It's yeah. definitely up for grabs. So, um, you know, back to uh, the outer planets, uh, we have a planet in the 12th house with Venus, right? And I said, this is just phenomenal when I saw it. It's within three degrees of Venus. Now, in the natal chart, when I said that you want to have those outer planets really like hairline with that particular uh, planet as far as degrees or with the cusp of a particular house within degrees. So we're talking really close within the grand scheme of things. Like that is almost the same thing as saying within the one or two degrees in a natal chart. I mean, it is, in fact, because we're talking, it takes 240 years for this guy to go around where it takes 21 years for him to move one sign. So literally, he's right on Venus. Right. Neptune is right on Venus. Neptune is at uh, 14 degrees, one minute, right? Virgo. Venus is at 17 minutes, uh, 17 degrees, nine minutes, Virgo. So right there, Vir uh, Neptune is sitting. And here's the, here's the other thing. It's so crazy because Neptune, according to astrology, is the planet of film. Right. Mm -hmm. So now we've got another lay in, another aspect. And let's just say, let's just say for uh, experimental sake, let's say Libra isn't the ascendant without even Libra being the ascendant, and it is, right? Vir uh, Venus being conjunct Virgo is still going to be that way in any ascendant, right? So again, Venus being conjunct Virgo is very, 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 very strong with regards to the film industry. Right. Yeah. And in the 12th house, therein lies the pornography aspect. Therein lies the hidden aspect, the underbelly, right? The the um, not so savory side of things, if you will, not the public side of things, if you will. So Neptune's in the 12th house and the 12th house also happens to represent film as well. Right. So, I mean, we got another it's perfect perfect lay-in for this particular chart to belong to this respective city. Um, and so the last thing I want to mention before we move on, and let me know if you have any comments or anything you want to add in, King, uh, at any point. Um, but um, the water system, right, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles, you know, and I've even noticed for years, man, Los Angeles has a, had a river, Say hat, yeah, right, yeah, and uh, you know, it, it's no longer there. Right? <laughs> 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 they have a canal, man, that go that the water supposed used to flow into, used to flow into. I mean, it's gone, right, gone. I mean, you might, I think you might see a puddle here and there, right? I, I was in Los Angeles uh, a couple times, and I didn't know they had a river, man. I was like, what's that? Oh, that was, that was the Los Angeles River. It was. What happened to was? Oh, yeah, it dried out. I'm like, wow. Now, how? Well, you see them in the movies all the time. Yeah, right? yeah, that, that. you do, in fact. You do, you do, in fact, you do. Um, I, when I took a trip there, uh, it just... You know, it was like weird because you see a big canal that's empty. Like it's like seeing a pool with no water. <laughs> it's like, where's the water, man? And it's like, yeah, it's gone. And then being here, most folks have never seen it in their life, man. You know, our age, they've never seen it, right? Not, not in the way it was intended. I'm sure. Um, that's different. So you know, definitely, definitely different. Um, but. You know, there's two planets that govern water in a chart, right? And I know some people would att attribute water to the to the moon. I mean, that's just pretty obvious, right? The moon governs the tides in the ocean. In fact, um, there's some people in ancient times that would use the moon to catch fish, right? To do fishing, right? They would literally know how to catch fish based on that lunar cycle. So the moon is definitely important. I mean, as far as tracking cycles and being able to do things uh, with regards to um, 
uh, manifest. I think they still use that today. I'm, I, think, I think some fishermen still still use that today. They very well may be. They very well. They, 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 I'm sure they do if they have any intelligence, because the moon obviously has some uh, effect on uh, on the Earth uh, in many ways. Not some has many effects on the Earth and people too, right? Because of course we know planets affect people. But <clears throat> yeah, um, the moon rules water, right? No, no doubt. Right. No doubt. But in the scheme of things and, you know, I my my knowledge expands beyond astrology. I, I've studied many different subjects. I've you know, been in a couple of schools of thought and, uh, you know, Venus also rules water as well. Now, moon, the moon rules extremely large, large bodies. One of them of the ocean, seas, shorelines, um, bays. Right. Um, things of that nature, right? Uh, we're talking, you know, where the salt water, you know, meets land, right? Yeah. Moon is more salt water, right? But you can't drink that stuff, right? You know, you drink salt water, you're going to want more water, right? Um, <laughs> so it's not and, something you can ingest, and per a, se. And a, and a doctor. <laughs> Right, and a doctor, right? You're going to need a couple things, right? And some antibiotics or something, right? To deal with whatever you ingested, right? Especially nowadays, right? 50, 150 years, 200 years ago, you might be get, able to get away without a doctor, but nowadays, yeah, it's stuff uh, in, that, in, that, in those oceans, definitely. But it rules oceans, right? In other words, it rules really salt water, right? But fresh water, right? Which is really water that accumulates from uh, high mountains and lakes and things like that, it's been filtered, right? It's been run through a process, right? And then uh, rendered, right, drinkable, right? Now, some fresh water can be drank right off the river, right? If you get it at the right place at the right time. I wouldn't advise it, right? But um, there are some springs, natural springs and things like that that can... Um, you can use their water. You can drink that water right off the source, if you will. But just to understand and to kind of connect the dots, if you will, uh, the kidney energies, the kidney, not kidney energy system, we're talking Chinese medicine here, but the kidney in the body, right? Um, they are the organs that filter the water in the body, right? That's why you urinate. Urine is mostly water, right? Yeah. And so the kidneys, bar none, this is to how to make the connect, to connect the dots, right? The kidneys, right, are governed by Venus, right? So fresh water is governed by Venus, right? Um, that, you know, the, our ancestors called it sweet water, right? It's not literally sweet to taste, but it's water that you can drink, right? Water that is palatable for the body, water that is um, good to taste, right? And uh, Venus is, where do we say it was? In the 12th house, right? Yeah. <laughs> now we're talking four for four here, right? I mean, now we're talking about series patterns, right? <laughs> over and over and over again, right? We're seeing that this is definitely the chart for Los Angeles. Now, not only that, again, it's also with, with Neptune. And Neptune rules obsessions as well, right? It rules um, um, uh, things that kind of take you away from reality, right? Drugs as well, right? I'm sure there's plenty of drugs in Los Angeles. Not to say there's not other drugs in other cities, because there is, respectively. I don't want people to get it twisted and think I'm just jumping on Los Angeles, because that's not true. I'm sure New York, Miami, and all the other major cities have access to narcotics. However, Los Angeles is very well known for that aspect of the city, right? And Venus, again, being in the 12th house, being, let's say, dried up by that uh, Virgoan placement shows as well, right, that the water, the fresh water is not plentiful. They have to get water from external sources, right, outside of their respective area, right? So that shows that it's ported in from someplace else, showing that it comes from another place, right? The 12th house rules the foreign aspects, not saying foreign, not necessarily just in countries, but maybe another state, yeah. another city, yeah. right? So, um, Again, and the moon, right? The moon, right? 
governs water as well. Now I'm saying it, it is salt water, but it also just has an affinity with water. So we can also look at the moon to try to gauge, you know, you look at more than one thing to really kind of gauge this. You want to kind of see things from an overall panoramic view. And the moon is in the sixth house, right? Uh, now, the moon also governs the mentality and the pulse of the people, how the people feel in the city. And the sixth house is not a house that is necessarily conducive to lunar energies, if you will, right? So the people definitely, you know, feel that lack, that uh, imbalance, because the sixth house is really about imbalances. They feel that imbalance with regards to the water, right? So, you know... All of the above, right? I don't, I don't know about you, Atef, but I definitely would lock this one in, right? As saying that uh, this is uh, uh, bar none, this city of Los Angeles, with regards to natal astro- uh, mundane astrology. Excuse me. Is there anything you want to add in on that one? Well, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, maybe you can hit this real quick. Um, where do you see the gang activity in this um, Los Ooh. Angeles chart? Ooh. Let's talk about it. So remember we said where where did you know I don't know about you man I know folks from the streets right yeah what I just say the streets yeah. right and so the streets again right we said it's the third house right the inner city streets is the third house I'll say it again where cars move <laughs> right. <laughs> Where they transverse, transverse, right? Where they go from A to B and back to A, and maybe even A, B to C and back to A, right? That's the streets. Well, what planet did we say was there? Mars, right? The planet of war, the planet of being combative, the planet of being the toughest, the strongest. Only the strong survive, so so they say, right? So that makes again that's five for five now. We getting right. I mean, it, 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 it's lining up. It's getting there. It's get, it's becoming stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, right? So, I mean, Mars being that. Uh, uh, mentality that you know do or die right me or you right uh, that that type of mentality is in the streets right right um, so excellent question King excellent question uh, again I'm saying we're five for five now right yeah I think we're doing pretty good <laughs> so, I think so um, so you know uh, we can move on, right? And we'll do this one fairly quickly because, you know, this city is easy to see. I mean, for me, maybe not for everybody, for my for my, my person. And uh, I'm pretty sure you'll see it pretty quickly as well. Um, and uh, it's one that's been in the news uh, and kind of still in the news somewhat, s- some, somewhat, right, in a, in a nominal sense, in a minimal sense, uh, Flint, Michigan. Right. And um, good old Flint, right? Um, I remember we went to Gary one time, and Gary is a close, close cousin of Flint, right? I mean, Gary, Indiana, and Flint, Michigan are not far from each other. Um, they're kind of reflective of one another. But um, uh, Flint, Michigan uh, has been in the news, right? And let's just start with before we even get in the news, uh, let's just kind of touch on the ascendant. Right, if you will, and um, you know, just like Los Angeles, right? Every um, city has a theme, right? If you will, kind of overall kind of perception, if you will, and um, that is a worker class city, right? Yeah. You don't move there to go to become a star, right? <laughs> right. Um, you, you don't go there to try to get big, right, if you will. Uh, and it never has been a place where you go to shine, right? Um, it's Virgo ascendant, right? And Virgo is the sign of complexities, right? But it's also the sign of service, hard work, and labor, Right. And uh, there's definitely some hard working people in that city, you know. Uh, it never reflects bad on the people, it just reflects bad on, on the unfortunate circumstances that surround the people. And 
Um, a lot of good people I've met from Flint. A oh, good friend of mine that I knew from way back in the day. He's no longer in Flint, and he left Flint a long time ago. <laughs> they, they exposed the water problem, right? And right, we'll talk about that power problem in a minute here. But it is a city of workers. It is a city that people of people that are dedicated to producing and to um, giving of themselves with regards to uh, whatever it is that they're doing, and so. Um, you know, Mercury is the planet that travels the fastest second to the moon in regards to the heavens. It takes about 88 days for it to make a complete cycle around the sun. So it's one of the fastest moving planets, if you will. And being fast, uh, things happen fast, right? So um, you'll find that industries, right, are there and then they're gone overnight, right? And, um, you know, it's phenomenal just when we look at the chart on what has happened in the overall process of the city and its decline. Uh, originally, it was called Vehicle City, uh, uh, you know, a while back when the uh, automobile industry was really prominent in, Amer in America. And uh, being Vehicle City, I mean, <laughs> uh, you can see that, you know, if you're manufacturing, and that's that Venu, that that's not Venusian, but the uh, Virgoan mindset to manufacture, to build, to construct, right, to work out the bugs, right, to to make things uh, uh, work, if you will, uh, you need that for vehicles, right? Uh, you you need that if you're going to be a city that creates cars. So, um, not only that. Right. Remember, we talked about lords, right? And uh, just to kind of give you a, a set, I know people are like, well, hey, what about this the time, date, and time for uh, Flint? And um, Flint, Michigan, is um, let's see if I'm correct here. Good old Flint is. If I'm correct, let me make sure I got it right here, my friend. It is, and I should have had that right there on the spot, but we got it right here. Flint is October 9th, 1835, right? Yep. And uh, what city, what time do you, I think I gave you, did you have the time for that? I got one? 8 a.m. Yep. 8 a.m. Yep. It is 8 a.m. Yes, you're right. Um, obviously, city of Flint, Michigan, so if you're going to put it in and calculate it yourself you're more than welcome to check it out and see what you find on your own but um <clears throat> we've got some things here that uh are dead giveaways um as far as the city is concerned now remember we talked about virgo being ruled by mercury right uh mercury is in the second house right of values right so this city valued itself uh, and it valued the hard work that it brought uh, by and large, right? And that hard work was galvanized by a conjunction with Mars, right? So Mars is the planet of effort, right? The planet of determination, right? The planet of force, right? The planet of um, um, pushing, right? Going beyond your limits, Right. And, yeah. you know, definitely if you're making cars and you're called, I mean, the name of the city was Vehicle City. So, I mean, you have to be putting in some work to get that name right in order to, to get that title. And so Mars being with and I'm talking when I say with I'm talking about again within three degrees. Now, Mars being within three degrees is a lot different than, than Neptune being within three degrees of Venus, as we talked about in the city of Los Angeles chart. Right. Uh, Mars being with Mercury. Right. Um, again, it just shows that that work, that effort, that push, that drive, it, it was there. Right. At some point, uh, now it's left. It's no longer vehicle city. Of course, the automobile industry has shifted like completely to a whole another. It's a whole on a whole another level. I mean, we have 
you know, the world at large competing with regards to creating cars. Um, you know, Japan and um, uh, um, um, you know, European countries, uh, China. Uh, you even have um, they even have an African car now, right? So, I mean, uh, you have Subaru, which is out of Australia. Right. So, you know, everyone has their respective car. If you, I mean, if you're a nation, you definitely want to kind of create something in, regard, in regards to an automobile if you're trying to um, compete, if you will, on the world scene. But, you know, the other thing I want to add into this is that not only is Mars with Mercury, right, Saturn is also with Mercury as well. And Saturn is, you yeah. know, that's a planet that is... Uh, for for good or bad, uh, it's a planet that definitely talks about long term cycles. It takes thirty years for Saturn to move around uh, the zodiac one time, right? So we're talking about you know, also a planet of work and service, right? In fact, Saturn is the planet of service, right? And so again, we can see the drive, the effort, the push, the determination, and the service, and the dedication, and the endurance uh, with the planet that rules the city itself, right? So again, you know, vehicle city. But that's no longer the case, right? Again, Mercury is a planet that moves quick, so as as quick and as splendorous as it was with regards to that title, the title is no more. And, um, you know, that shows, you know, we're talking about one for one again, right? I wouldn't say two for two, right? Because Mercury is the planet that also deals with automobiles as well, right? Bar none. Right, Mars would be a second. Mars, is, Mars. There's planets that deal with automobiles. Uh, Venus is the planet of automobiles. It, in in regards to what we say, what we say, a caraca or a significator or an indicator. Right. So it is, and we'll talk about that as well because we're going to do a two for two here in a minute. Right, and a three for three, just like we did with Los Angeles. Yeah. But, um. Mars is also a planet of automobiles. And I'm saying the mechanics, the engineering side. I'm not saying, you know, Mars is, a, is an indicator for cars. But if I had to say, well, you know what, I'd rather have Mars deal with my car as far as fixing it than, than Venus, right? <laughs> you understand what I mean? Like getting your hands dirty, being able to be fearless, hardworking, industrious, right? I mean, we're talking manly stuff here right <laughs> not to say women don't fix cars because they do i know women probably make great mechanics and i've even met one or two here or there but um you know it venus is the planet that deals with the luxury side of things right and uh automobiles are luxury Right? It's a necessity in some senses, but in the sense of the word, you wouldn't die without an automobile. I mean, people have don't have automobiles. That's why you have the public transportation system in the first place. So, you know, you can get around without an automobile. It's a luxury, if you will, right? But, uh, you know, Mercury being the planet that rules the natural third house, which is or the natural third sign, which is Gemini, right? It also rules transportation, right? It rules moving from A to B, right? B to C and so forth, right? So it is also it also deals with the transit system and henceforth it is also an indicator of the automobile side of things or industry, right? So again Bar none, right? You can see the connections. Um, but to add insult to injury, right? The the Caraca for cars, which is Venus, is in the first house. Yeah. Right. So again, now we have the the ruler, right? Mercury of the city, right? With the planet of hard work and drive, also the planet of service, right? Showing vehicle city and then venus is in the ascendant at 25 degrees right so boom again 
right? You can see there's a what we call confluence, and confluence is when we begin to tie in, right, many layers of something to get a, a an occurrence. If you have it once, it's it's a it's it might happen. If you have it twice, it's a good strong possibility. If you have it three times, right, and three times they always say it creates a pattern then you begin to have a manifestation of something. And four times, yeah, it's going to happen, man. Just not a matter of what, but a matter of when. Or not an if, but a matter of when. So, you know, Venus being in the first house, bar none, right? Now we have all of the perfect makings of automobile, of vehicle city, excuse me. Now, there's some things that cause the decay if you will, of this particular um, situation, of this city, rather, and for that title to be removed. The 12th Lord, right? And again, Lord, meaning the ruler of the 12th house, which is the sun. The 12th sign from Virgo is Leo, right? So the 12th house ruler is the sun. The sun rules Leo. It's in the ascendant. It's in the first house. So loss, right? Whatever rules the 12th house brings loss to the city, right? So the city loses, right? Then the sun is government as well. The sun is rulers, right? Um, the sun is like the mayor, if you will, right? Um, the, the, the people that kind of govern the city. And they, they, it's, it's loss, right? They bring loss. They bring that, that ability. And if you think about it and what we're about to talk about next, it makes perfect sense. Right? They said that the city itself was undermining the people with regards to their knowing that the city's water was full of lead. Right? Now check this out. We said that Venus rules water, right? Right? Well, Venus happens to be the Yoga Karaka, right? Right, a, really a Yoga Karaka, but um, not the Yoga Karaka, but a planet that is beneficial for the Virgo Ascended, so to speak, right? But nonetheless, right, and I say so to speak with a very uh, reserved tongue, because any planet that can... When you have a sign as the ruler, any planet that's in that sign... Right, that literally causes that is debilitated in that sign can't always truly be like the beneficial planet, right? So, there's a rule that kind of goes with that particular placement, if you will, as it being a so called beneficial planet. But we know it being debilitated in that sign, it's conjunct, and when I say conjunct, it's when so many degrees it's in the same sign and it's within so many degrees of a planet, so it's conjunct the sun. It's with the sun. The sun is at 24 degrees, Virgo. Venus is at 25 degrees, uh, Virgo. So it's combust. Called copa. Copa is like burnt, right? So it's combust, right? It's burnt. It's literally singed, right? And Venus ruling water is ruined. The, the governors, the rulers, not the governors, but the, the mayors, the people that rule the city, knew that it was bad water. <laughs> right so then lies now we got two for two i'm gonna say three for three right because we added in those other factors that one you know the ascendant lord going here being with these planets and then venus now is two being in the ascendant being the karaka in the indicator or significator for cars and now three that venus which rules fresh water right it's in the sign of debilitation, number one, right, or point one within that context, like literally, right, the water is damaged, and now the sun combusting it also creating that damage, right? It, I mean, it's, it's right there, right? Yeah. It's right there. You know, I even add this into the equation. Yes, Venus is in Virgo. Right, Libra's in Saturn. I mean, Saturn's in Libra. Yes, they're in two different signs, two different houses. So they are not together, but they are within ten degrees of one another. Right, Venus is at actually no, they're in eight degrees within eight degrees of one another. I'm sorry, 
Venus is at 25 degrees Virgo. Saturn is at 3 degrees Libra. So Saturn rules lead. <laughs> right. So right there. Right? Yeah. They're, they're literally sitting there. And, you know, you can't see it. You know, we're talking like, you know, it, it's, eight o'clock in, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. So you wouldn't have saw this because the sun was out. Right. Yeah. Right. So you couldn't have seen this. But let's say... But you get, we could block the sun, right, for just for all intents and purposes, and the night sky would be there. You would see Saturn and Venus sitting right next to one another, right? So literally, right, we have this combination that shows that the water system is completely damaged by lead, and that the city, the the the, the, the rulers of the city had an insight on this particular apparatus. Yeah. Right. Two for two. I always say three for three. Lastly, right, the city has become, right, um, I want to say crime ridden, but it's not a place that you, you know, you write about like saying I want to live there and I'm going to move there. The crime rate is definitely something that is to be noted um, in the city. And that is, of course, because of the undermining of the overall intentions and the original um, um uh, splendor of the city, which, you know, we said it was called Vehicle City, right? So it being Vehicle City, you take away the the automobile industry and you're left with a desolate town, right? For all intents and purposes. Not to say all of Flint is bad and they don't have any nice houses and things like that. I'm sure they have some areas that, you know, would be notable. But for the city as a whole, yeah. It's definitely one that you would consider as um, uh, on the lower end of the spectrum with regards to um, affluence, if you will. So when you don't have affluence and the have-nots take over, right, then crime begins, right? And the moon, right, is the sentiments of the people, right? It's how the people feel in the city, and the moon is in the eighth house, right? The eighth house is a house that is it's a rough spot, right? It's a challenge spot. Now, it can be bring some benefits. Not all, like I said, nothing's all bad and nothing's all good. There's always duality, yin and yang to everything, right? Um, <clears throat> and the moon being the sentiments, the feeling, right, the vibe, if you will, of the people, right, it shows it's in the eighth house of, I'm going to say, criminality. Now, now, there are two houses, really three, really three, for all intents and purposes, that can rule criminality, right? The sixth house is the first house, definitely, right, can rule criminality. Who's criminals? Why not? Right. When in the significators of a chart, you want to look at the sixth house to deal with that criminal element, but also rules workers, hard workers. Um, it rules um, 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 indiv individuals that deal in the health field, health field, health industry. So that's the sixth house. But it, it, again, each house has several um, uh, things that it indicates. Right. The twelfth house also rules criminality. Right. So we're talking about that hidden side, as we talked about with um, Los Angeles, right? That hidden underbelly of things, right? The the closet, if you will, what you keep in the back, right? It can rule organized crime, right? But crime is also the eighth house because the sign that is affiliated with the house, eighth house, is the scorpionic energy, and scorpionic energy is what we call that bipolar, dualistic, hot and cold, that icy hot energy, right? Right? It can flip, switch, and transform at a moment's notice. It rules corruption, right? It rules the element of decay, right? And so the moon being there, the people feel that decay, they feel that corruption, they feel that angst, and it's in the sign of Aries. Definitely folks are there that are the folks that are there and you can see it now. They're angry, <laughs> right? They're frustrated. They're ready to whoop some, you know, what with some, you know, what, right? Yeah. Right. 
And I could get into deeper imports. I mean, I think we've explored a lot at this point. I, we, I could go deeper. Just a simple fact of saying that the sun and the moon are eight houses from itself, the governing body of the, of the city, and the people are not going to get along because they're in what's called a fighter stance, right? The eighth house, right, from the moon, right? Right? Excuse me. The sixth house from the moon is the first house, meaning if I count from eight all the way around to one, it's six. That means they're fighting. Right. And then if I count from one to eight, that means there's some hidden uh, corruptive right elements that are behind the relationship between the, the, the government, the people that govern and the actual people of the city itself. So, again, we got five for five. I mean, I could keep going, you know, but just for the sake of time, you know, we'll cut it from here. But, you know, these are definitely things that you can begin to see that astrology has the power to unravel and reveal with regards to uh, large uh, 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 operations, uh, bodies of people, cities, and so forth. And I didn't even throw in the fact that um, Pluto, right, is in the seventh house, right? And the seventh house is looking directly at the first house, right? So again, throwing that light, right, of destruction, Right, throwing that light of, um, of, um, of, of being uh, un uh, taken under, if you will. Uh, Hades is like Pluto, right? In fact, they're the same thing in Greek mythology. Hades and Pluto are the same, and Hades rules the underworld, right? So that Plutonian energy being thrown onto the first house, and it's there because we're talking about things that have existed and can exist for long periods of time. It's throwing that light right onto the actual image and the actual uh, general theme of the city itself. So we can see, I mean, and, and we're talking about in opposition to the sun within two degrees, Pluto's at 22 degrees, sun is at 24 degrees, directly across from one another. So, I mean... Six for six now, right? <laughs> so, you know, you know, you can see bar none that this is, these are the the, uh, the uh, charts for the city. So, um, we'll definitely be doing some more of this in the future. Again, Liberia is one I really like to delve into uh, that we can talk and have some fun with with regards to its relationship to uh, the history of African slash African American people, and talk about uh, some of those imports at some point down the line. Is there anything you want to add in, any questions that you have, King, or anything that you'd like to throw out there in regards to these topics? Well, no, I think I think we pretty much covered it, you know, in uh, awesome. great, awesome. great detail indeed. So, you know, um, yeah, I think I think this is a good, you know, good place to go ahead and, uh, you know, table this convo. Um, for the time being and you know as you all you know can see you know with astrology I mean we can we can go <laughs> you know we can we can you know I mean we covered a lot but there's a lot that wasn't covered you know so you know just you know just listening to these episodes into this podcast is you know overall I think you know it can help give people a good respect you know for the science itself and, um, you know, to, you know, hopefully bring it back to his, you know, proper place. And, you know, just in the, you know, people have the right idea when they start thinking about astrology and how strong of a science it is and how, you know, um, useful it is to, you know, our, our everyday lives and such, you know. Definitely, definitely. That's, that's, you know, that's one of the things I'm here to do is to really bring it back to a lot of its splendor. Uh, because you know it's not it's not a dead science, it's not a law science, and it's not a pseudo science. You know, it's definitely like you said, one a tough that we can use to do many things um, to review the past, to look at the future, and to even see the present as far as things that are going on around us, and to unravel things that may may not be so apparent sometimes. So, uh, definitely yeah. with you on that one. Absolutely. So, um, you know. Um Again, you know, um, this podcast is brought to you by uh, Push It Forward Media Group and Kalapurusha Astrology. Um, you can find us at uh, pushitforward.com. That's P-U-S-H-I-T-F-W-D.com. Um, or at um, Push It Forward Media or Push It Forward, P-U-S-H-I-T-F-W-D 
on Instagram and you can follow this podcast. And this is, you know, you can direct all your questions here at cosmic combo. Um, that's C O S M I C C O N V O. That's on Instagram. You can find us there. Um, also on Facebook at cosmic combo podcast. And, um, you know, you can also email your questions at cosmic combos podcast at gmail.com. Um, brother Ra, you want to give them, you know, your contact information again for, uh, Cali Perusha. Definitely. Definitely. Tough. So, uh, again, uh, stay tuned. It is coming. Uh, it's just, um, in, in the works, if you will, and we we put things out that make sure we make sure that are timeless, if you will, that uh, have some longevity, and it's not just a fly by night and something that you know is put together in a hodgepodge. This is research oriented and substantiated by, as we did earlier, uh, many fundamental points where we can uh, go over and over and over again to make sure that uh, this is exactly what we're talking about. But you can see uh, uh, there is one up now. Uh, and, video on Kala Purusha Astrology on YouTube. Uh, there will be one, another one coming very, very soon. And I'll even give you a prelim on that one. That's actually the uh, chart of the United States of America. So uh, that one, one will be de- definitely interesting. It'll be similar to uh, something we did here with those two, these two respective cities. Uh, you can find that again at Kala Purusha Astrology on YouTube. And you can also find me on Facebook. Uh, my name on there is uh, Shechem Ra. And also, you can find me on IG at Shechem Ra. So, uh, if you have any questions or if you have any interest in this particular science, whether you want to uh, get your chart done or interested in classes or even just have any questions, uh, definitely hit me up on those avenues. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So, um, yeah, that's it for this episode. We uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, you know, the numbers are looking good. We we greatly appreciate you know, you all checking it out and engaging us and asking questions and, um, you know, uh, look forward to a great episode coming up next week as well. All right. Make sure you like, um, share this with your, you know, share this on social media and share it with your family, your friends and everything like that. And let's, uh, you know, go ahead and blow this thing up. All right. So, um, with that being said, um, peace. We're out. Peace. Peace.